Hi. This video was taken directly from our monthly Patreon live stream. If you enjoy it or find it interesting, please consider donating. Your donations help us create free content for language learners and maintain our awesome community. Go to community.refold.la slash Patreon dash benefits to learn more. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. All right. Everyone's here. The gang's all here. All right. <laughs> The gang's um, all here. Yeah. So to kick off the conference, we have uh, these individual members of the community to represent their uh, discords and communities for their language. Um, first, um, we have Toast from the German server. And he has some, uh, some stuff he wants to talk about with the uh, German server. Yeah, so I guess I'll kick it right off. Um, I was told to talk a little bit about why the server is awesome and just what's going on here. So I guess starting with what makes the German server in particular awesome, um, I think it's really easy to say that any server has a really nice community, especially at Refold. And then the question is just, what does it mean to have a nice community? Maybe it's, are people willing to answer questions? Vanessa was talking at length earlier about the FAQ. In the German server, we have two FAQs floating around that are both maintained by members of the German community that just go into a lot of the specific answers, the specific questions we run into all the time. And then, you know, anytime you ask a question, you're going to get an answer pretty quickly, no matter how detailed or specific it is, um, or just how general it is. And so people are really nice on that front. Um, another definition of a nice community is maybe that it's active. And to that, I say, the German server was so active that historically I've had to start being less active because it would distract me from learning German because I'm too busy engaging with the German community. It's really cool in that way. Um, and then finally, another way of looking at just what makes the, the server, what makes it nice community is just, are the people nice? And that one, um, there are actually a few people I've met in the server that just have been really cool people and I became friends with them and I would hang out with them regularly, not even related to German all the time because it's just a nice community all around. So that's kind of where the German server is at community wise. And then as far as events, um, the German server doesn't have a ton of events happening all the time, just because a lot of us are really focused on learning. Um, and so occasionally we have the impromptu watch along. Occasionally we schedule a play a game, a let's play of some games. Scribble.io is pretty popular on that front, but for the most part, it's just a nice place to hang out. And that's a bit of what I would say is cool about the German server and where it's at right now and how things are coming along. Cool. Any uh, like specific content or material that's been going around the server that's been popular or? Yeah, there's a lot of content that's been going around. There's um, a few drives where a lot of community members, in particular Arctic, has been really po powerful here. Um, Top Dog also has put in a lot of content, but there's a lot of people in this community that are working on categorizing content and just distributing what is the cool stuff. We have plenty of emotes in the server based on just some of our favorite YouTubers that anyone can message me. And because we have emote space, I'll typically add the emotes and we have those just floating around. Um, and we all tend to have our areas that we like to watch content in and we share it around sometimes. Cool. Um, in fact, just now someone was talking about going to a musical in Germany. So that's really fun. And I'm nice. excited to see how that one develops. Since you mentioned uh, Top Dog, uh, do you know about all the volunteer opportunities that are going on in German server right now? Um, I know just a little bit about the volunteer activities. I haven't been looking on them too much. Um, but I know generally there's some of them around there. And honestly, I don't know the specifics of it right now. Isn't the uh, subtitling project Yeah, the subtitling big? project is really yeah. big right now. There's a lot of people working on that. I know Arctic was doing that. I saw they posted an update on that just recently. Um, Top Dog is also in the subtitling project, like you mentioned. Um, and yeah, I remember that one. And yeah, subtitling is really big in that community right now. Is there anything else that you really like about the server, like your favorite thing about the server, the German server specifically, because the refold community is really nice yeah. overall. I think my favorite thing, I think there's a lot of ways that it's really good in a really generic way. It's really nice. But my favorite thing is actually really specific. And it's just that 
people will submit emotes for their favorite YouTubers on the German server. And then people just share their favorite YouTubers all the time. Um, mine is Jinja and we have like four Jinja emotes. Um, and it's just really funny to just see those fly around. And I think that really makes it stand out in my heart at least. And it's just something that you don't, I don't see from anywhere else in the refold server, except for maybe the Russian server sometimes. Yeah. Um, what do you think people should do if they have an idea for something to do on your server? Um, typically the answer has been to do it. Um, I think one example here is that I wanted to start an FAQ because there were a lot of questions that I was seeing over and over again. So I just started an FAQ and then it suddenly became a very popular resource in the German server. Um, I know there's a member who runs a blog there that just has answers about some what they think on, about learning German and such. Um, there are people who would um, want to share content with the community and they would just do it. And typically, if you just share something with the genuine intent for it to help a lot of people, it's going to find its way to help people because we tend to keep those resources around and just share them at will. Yeah. What uh, benefits do you think people have just from learning a language in a community as opposed to just off by themselves? I think the biggest one is that it's less lonely because if you're just learning a language, um, maybe you engage with the community in that language. Like I'm in a server that's all German native speakers that where I'm like the only language learner there. And it really gets kind of lonely sometimes because there's not a lot of like stuff to do as far as just, it's kind of the same watching other people talk or watching other people do things. But when you're in a community, you kind of get to share that with other people. You get to just talk about things that you are watching lately, you can do it in broken German and a lot <laughs> yeah. of fun grammar mistakes. And, you know, you get a lot of benefits over there. Um, and then typically, I think the biggest thing is just that you get to make a lot of friends in the language learning space. And um, outside of language learning communities, it's kind of rare to just run into people that are like, oh, yeah, I'm also learning German or, hey, I'm also learning Japanese. And it's like, ah, hey, I finally get to talk about this hobby I have with people. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, thank you for representing the German server. So we are going to move to uh, Luke from the Mandarin server. Oh, you're muted, I think. Uh, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, good stuff. All right, you can go ahead. Yes, yeah, so um, nice to meet everyone. If you don't know me yet, I'm Luke. I'm the one of the mods on the Mandarin server. Um, some of you may know me from before, from I did an interview with Matt maybe a few years back um, and have a small YouTube channel as well. But um, yeah, it's, it's really enjoying taking part in the Mandarin uh, community here at Refold and just happy to kind of share what we've been doing. So um, I guess just go straight into the server update then. Yeah, all your um, things you wanted to talk about. Sure. So I think that the main thing that we were working on recently um, Previously on the Mandarin server, we used, um, for the resource sheet, we used an Excel doc, um, which served the purpose of being able to you know, categorize everything and you can still filter it and stuff like that. But then as more and more people started to add it, add content to it, we were worried that basically it's just so daunting for any any new people coming in to refold and they click, oh, this is, re this is resource doc with a resource sheet with an Excel with loads of recommendations in, you click on it and you just get kind of inundated with this wall of text for TV show recommendations. I mean, at that point, it's not much different to um, just Googling it and looking at stuff yourself, really. So we wanted to try and think of a way to make it more visually appealing. Um, so what we ended up doing, we actually created a notion, um, which is it's hosted on a website over there and it's a much more visual way of representing um, shows so you can put it in this gallery view and you can see you know like pictures um, for each show or tv show or movie or whatever that's there and you can add filters as well so it's similar um, searching capacity to a spreadsheet in the way that you can add custom filters on but it's much more visually appealing to navigate and instead of just adding everything under the sun what we've been doing so far is we've been trying to add more of maybe a smaller curated list that we as the mod team approve so that it's not just a big list of you know everything which i still think would be quite daunting for for beginners it's just more of like a curated list that's just easy to navigate and hopefully that will 
uh, make it to just a lot less intimidating for new owners shorting the refold. Cool. Anything else you want to talk about from the Mandarin server? Um, I'm just looking at the other talking points. So I think um, talking a bit about the different events in in Refold, what we and I guess what I what I like about the server, I remember when I was um, you know when I was I used to study abroad in Taiwan in Taipei, and what I used to do there was kind of some of my um, course mates and stuff would always you know would go to a Chinese class and then after would always like hang out together. And like watch TV shows, maybe you'd all come around to my house and like watch a movie in Chinese or something with your friends. And when I came back to England and I started kind of immersing more by myself again, it felt quite hard to sort of like recreate that. And it was going back to the more um, sort of isolated feeling of just me there with my laptop or whatever. So something that we've started doing quite regularly on the Mandarin server, and it's been going for a while now, um, hosted by some of our other um, you know mods and community assistants, is there's a monthly a Donghua event, which is basically just like a Chinese anime. Um, that's that's hosted every week on a Wednesday. And also every two weeks, we've got like a movie night. And we've normally have, you know, a couple of people go into that. And that's quite a nice way to sort of recreate that feeling of just, you know, you, you're not alone. You're kind of watching it with people. And then also um, you can like discuss. I mean, you know, just discuss the show as you're watching it because it makes it a lot more interesting then. Um, other than that, we have a book club every few months that, I host um, and we've we've actually it's picked up again now we've got quite a few people currently discussing the current book um, it's a book called Blue Blooded Man by an author called Ni Kwong which was uh, this quite influential sci-fi slash political writer before from Hong Kong um, so that's been going really well as well um, just thinking if there's anything else to say um, in terms of new resources um, quite recently for Chinese stuff for the Donghua. Um, one of our mods, Alicia, is an absolute expert in that. And she's recently watched or been to a few of the different conferences. There's some hosted by Tencent, IQI, and um, stuff like that. And she's really put in, you know, pages and pages of recommendations in our Donghua channel. And that's becoming quite active now. So if you're looking at getting into Chinese and you want to start watching media and you're maybe into anime or something like that, you can try looking at the uh, some of the Chinese shows that have been coming out because the quality's uh, gone up quite a lot recently and that's quite cool to see. Cool. Uh, since you mentioned the Mandarin resources, I wanted to go ahead and share my screen so I can show the Notion. I think I have it up. Yes. So this is yep. the Notion right here. And as you can see, it is very pretty with this nice banner. <laughs> and we have it broken up by categories, which is pretty visually pleasing. And you mentioned the Donghua. Yeah. So if we go in there, if it'll load, oh, that is nice. How you can see the yeah. thumbnails of everything. I'm, I'm a visual person. So seeing a picture of something will make me want to actually watch it instead of just looking at text. <laughs> Yeah, sure. I, I mean, I'm the same. The amount of books that I've impulse bought just because the cover art's quite cool. Um, yeah. And if if you go back onto the into the Donghua like videos or something as well, if you I go in the works. in the right side, top right there, you can see filter. Oh yeah. Um. So if you click on that, there's various filters. You know, like genre. Um. You can filter for region if it's like China or Taiwan. Mm. Um, does it have subtitles? Is it soft or hard subtitles? Is it um, simplified or traditional Chinese? That sort of thing. Oh, yeah, um, that's nice. Yeah, and then for stuff like books, there'd be things in there like uh, you know, what, what the author is. If there's a particular author that you're looking for more works from, you can filter for that as well. Um, so it's just really trying to you know make uh, that, that one on the top right there, three body problem. That's one, one of my favorite things that I've read in any language. So if you're, into, if you're, if you're a sci-fi fan. Um, but yeah, just, just really trying to make it more visually appealing and easier to navigate. So I think Notion is mm -hmm. really good because you can use the filtering power of something like a spreadsheet, but you, you get all the, you can see all the like uh, book covers and stuff in front of you or, you know, thumbnails and so on. Yeah, we'll have to get this going for uh, other communities so they can have this nice pretty resource as well mm -hmm. so i'll go ahead and stop sharing that sure 
And then um, anything else you want to cover before we move on? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess one thing um, that I posted in one of our um, just language general channel about the other day to try and gauge community interest for was the idea of doing some sort of like shadowing or chorusing challenge. Um, and I actually got quite a lot of people feedback saying they're interested in something like that. So if you, at, at the moment, we have a lot of um, fun things to do as a community across the servers for stuff like input. So, you know, watching movies together, book clubs, um, like daily, uh, weekly immersion channels or just coming up and putting in a stream or something like that. But there's not that much on the more output side or the more mechanical stuff once you get to like, you know, stage three and four and want to start outputting. So something that I'm looking into and probably looking to set up in the next few months would be some sort of shadowing or chorusing challenge. Um, and, you know, whether that's cross a server or just in the Mandarin server, really just gauging if, if people think they're interested or they've got anything that they'd want to see, feel free to um, just shoot me a DM on Discord. Um, it's just uh, Luke. Um, you should be able to find me on the mod for the Mandarin server, or um, if not, maybe you just ask one of the other general mods and they should be able to point you in my direction. Um, so just getting ideas for that, really. Um, and yeah, I think I think if we can get some natives in to sort of offer correction as well, that would be even better. And I was thinking something along the lines of maybe having like a monthly or so progress video and just recording you and doing almost like a sprint, but specifically designed around shadowing with some uh, recordings for like milestones and stuff like that and then native feedback would be the sort of thing I was looking at but uh, yeah if anyone has any ideas around that or wants to put anything forward just please contact me yeah uh, and sounds I think that's good it, so thank you very cool. much yeah I'll, I'll be curious to see how that works out um, so next we will go to the Cantonese server with Hulk take it away hello um, all right so I think um, we're like one of the, with the smaller, maybe the smallest server actually in Refold, but that doesn't mean that we're not one of like, we're mighty. We have, part of that is because Cantonese, um, I would say up until like really the past year or to the current day has like been a pretty limited in its resources. And so actually the Refold Cantonese servers, uh, the, the Refold Cantonese server is probably, in my opinion, the best server. If you're actually interested in learning Cantonese, you should definitely come check us out. Um, one of the reasons for that is just a little bit background on Cantonese is that it's a diglossic, um, or, or especially in Hong Kong, they have diglossia. So the written language, um, the standard written language is essentially Mandarin, more or less. And the way people speak is with actual Cantonese. However, you can write with actual Cantonese, but that greatly reduces, especially the amount of literature and the amount of subtitles. So a lot of the work I've been doing and the community have been doing is gathering these materials that match how people speak and match really the actual Cantonese language itself. So uh, one of the things that I worked on, um, or that's cool, I think about our servers, we have, uh, I devised this resource master list and it's basically a hyperlink section. It has all the major resources with the hyperlinks to what we have. It's like all categorized. So you can just be, oh, what are the best dictionaries? You go click on the dictionary section, it takes you there. Um, I, it even has a basic explanation of like the situation with the characters and the writing system um, there. And it also has like beginner listening material, graded readers. It's all laid out there. It's awesome. Um, so um, aside from that, um, there's obviously there's lots of uh, content collected in, in the various channels. Um, and we also have a, a lot of community projects. I lead a bunch of them. Um, the one I'm most uh, proud of is uh, called Canto Captions. So I co-founded this with uh, another Refill member named Crush. And we basically, we first we, we collected what little written, so accurate Cantonese subtitles there were. And then we also have paid and to get transcriptions. We've transcribed, my, I transcribed myself and like create subtitles uh, from the transcriptions. And we have it all in this nice Google Drive and it's amazing. Um, Another member, uh, Robert, um, he wrote a script that basically scraped YouTube. And so, and he created this giant doc and it has every YouTube video that actually has Cantonese subs, uh, actual written Cantonese subs and or standard written tiny subs. And you can filter um, and you can just browse all of the over 5,000 videos with actual Cantonese subs. It's uh, one of the best resources for Cantonese that exists. 
if not actually the best, it's it's amazing. Um, another doc we have is since the like what I explained earlier with the written language being especially dominated by this Mandarin-esque written language, um, there's quite a lack of actual books that are written in Cantonese. Um, but they're, they do exist. And I went through, especially Google Play. Google Play was a gold mine. I went through, I basically would search some Cantonese-only characters, browse, look at the preview, look at see if the book is actually written in Cantonese. And I tried to catalog every book that I could possibly find that was actually written in Cantonese into this one doc called the Cantonese Literature Doc. Um, that's also an amazing resource. It all has hyperlinks to uh, Google Play, where, where store, wherever you can buy it. And, um, I still need help with this to gather more stuff, to write blurbs, um, to kind of find like the best, highest quality material um, for learners at different stages and the most compelling content. Um, also, I mean, it's, it's expanded a bit. I also try to find um, articles uh, that are written in Cantonese, um, especially on Medium. There's a lot of Cantonese writers. And so it's really, it's a really cool project. I'm excited about that. Uh, aside from that, there is an OCR project. Since a lot of the books are PDFs, they don't have actual selectable text. And so me and uh, Gray, another user, have been working on OCRing certain books um, and novels to have selectable text. So you can do instant lookups with uh, pop-up dictionaries, important with other tools like Link or Migaku or what have you. And it's just um, that project's in its infancy, but I, it's really cool too. Um, and lastly, I've started to create, since we were lacking a really good community deck for Cantonese, um, I'm not really that thrilled about all the decks that are out there. I don't think any of them are that good. The best one is a Glossica sentence deck, but I'm trying to work to create a deck where a learner can just start, they know nothing about Cantonese, they start this deck, and it takes them to a, a late beginner stage. And so it's kind of the idea is based on the Mandarin spoon fed deck where it's all one T. Um, I think I'm going to cap it at a certain point to where it's not going to be perfectly one T and then it's going to start introducing more natural sentences. So essentially this deck is going to teach you basic grammar and vocab um, throughout it. It starts with just isolated words, just pure vocab. Then it moves to phrases and then um, it introduces verbs. So you can then it's all sentences from there. It'll be a, it's a vocab deck. There's a vocab, just like the Mandarin community deck, there will be a character, a word on the front, and then a sentence below so that you can figure out the context of what meaning that should be. And that's really in its infancy. I just made a pretty much a preliminary version that has uh, around 300 um, words, and I have somebody testing that, and I'll continue with that. Um, and I'll probably try to get the community to help uh, shortly with that. Cool. Um, and record audio, hopefully. It's, um, I'm really excited about that. Awesome. And aside from um, the resources, we have a bunch of community style, uh, or just like some community interaction. So I think, um, so I started this Cantonese movie night um, just so I, partly just to keep myself accountable uh, with uh, watching more and more stuff. And so I just was, I'll just pop in there every Saturday and watch a movie. Um, and get some more community involvement. Right now, I have it. I probably, um, I think Robert's also maybe going to host some of these. But right now, we have the idea to like switch between every other week. We're going to do live action and then switch to animated. This way, we kind of can keep um, the live action going to be much harder, and then with the animated, a bit uh, more approachable. Um, and then I'm thinking to motivate this to where we have like a group chat afterwards because we tend to have people just hang around afterwards. And so I'm thinking of just paying um, the people for to get chats every Saturday too after the movie, if um, that's what they're interested in. Um, aside from that, we actually had some IRL meetups in the UK, um, I think, uh, with Clowergen and Pachinko. And um, I think Luke, actually. <laughs> Wait, no, maybe Luke didn't go, actually. I think it was, um, but he was in the area. But then I think some other person. And then I guess just to conclude, um, we have like a really resource rich uh, server and we actually have a lot of more passionate learners i would say and older learners and people with a deeper connection to the language than a lot of other servers because um it kind of tends to select for people that are very uh, curious about cantonese itself because the mandarin server will take the people that are generally interested in chinese languages um and so we end up with um a bit tight closer-knit group who's really looking to um 
improve and actually like promote the language it itself. Um, and so we have a lot of heritage speakers and a lot of native speakers uh, relatively who are always helping out too. So yeah, I think that'll about do it for the Cantonese server. Awesome. Thank you for representing the Cantonese server and telling us all about it. So next we'll go to the Japanese server with Brett. Hey, what's up everybody? I am Brett. Some of you might know me as Brett Williams film the admin or one of the admins now of the Japanese server. Uh, yeah, so I think our server is fantastic for anybody that wants to learn Japanese. We have a lot of great resources. We have a lot of people that are very helpful. Uh, I think one thing that makes us very different from most of the other servers, at least uh, Discord servers or communities that I've personally been a part of that aren't refold related, is Japanese culture, or not Japanese culture, the Japanese language learning culture tends to be pretty toxic for some reason. I don't know why there's a lot of uh, toxicity in it. And a lot of the other servers that I've been in are either very unhelpful or very toxic or give bad advice. And uh, luckily we've been able to build a server that does uh, none of those three. It's not toxic. It's very helpful. And I think we give great advice. So uh, I think that's a reason to head on over. Um, I've never had a chance to talk kind of like in a public forum about the server. So I'm going to take a second to uh, thank some of the people that have been through to help us get to that point. Cause it was uh, very difficult in the beginning. Uh, we had um, mythology, mythology Suite, Sin, Alumnus, Malark, Trudy, Cordump. Uh, all these people helped us get to the point where we are now, where it's as uh, kind of useful as it is. The culture is kind of like set in and people don't come in trying to bring their toxicity as much. It's more kind of like the vibe is there and it's a little bit easier to keep going because of those people. And of course, we have new people helping like Alice, Sparkles, uh, Glasswing, NoFi, Ben Kerman, George, and of course, the rock star herself, Shiki or Vanessa, as you may have seen her in this live. Um, also, we have great helpers, Nerdy, Orange Light, uh, Ampu, Ludu, Zek, and Kernick, who have all done a great job helping us keep that going. So I think because of all these helpers, uh, it's a great place to be if you're looking to learn Japanese, especially if uh, you're a very anti-toxic type of person. Uh, so yeah, as far as what we've been up to recently, um, We've been really working to streamline the server uh, at first because of the culture that we had to build and a lot of pe people being counter to that. We created a lot of roadblocks to get in to make sure we only had people that really wanted to be in the server there. And recently that's been less important. So we're trying to streamline it. It's much easier to get in, just kind of join the server and get in. So that's one thing that I think has been very beneficial to new people, especially people that aren't very tech savvy. Uh, and also we had a Ghibli July ran by NoFi. And uh, they did a fantastic job at it. I was really, really impressed with how they set up different viewing schedules for people that are in different time zones, really went out of their way to make sure that everybody could enjoy that and uh, have fun doing it. So that's something that I would really like to see NoFi do more things of in the future. So that's something you guys should can maybe look forward to having uh, NoFi run more type of immersion things like that in short sprints or maybe more long-term things. We'll see what they are feeling. Uh, another thing we've worked on, as you may have seen in the announcements today, is the Japanese grammar guide. So I think the Japanese grammar guide is pretty cool. We tried to do something extremely different with it. Uh, we tried to have it be focused towards immersion learners specifically. And anytime you do something new or different, it's bound to have uh, things that aren't exactly how they should be yet. So it's in its beta form. So I recommend everybody go check that out. And if you're a patron, you can go check that out and provide some feedback for us so that we can make it better um because hopefully other guides will kind of use that as an example and then they can get more guides out uh dealing with it so and then the last thing i want to say thank you to my cheese for getting the japanese refold server q a bot off of my computer so that we can have better uptime on it <laughs> so thank you my cheese for doing that and then what are we looking to do in the future well tomorrow uh, anybody that's interested uh, we have a q a tomorrow at noon central chicago time uh, in the announcements, you can check out and see what that is in your time. Uh, so we're kind of doing a QA. and a It's going to be kind of a, at the end, we'll do like a typical language learning Q&A. But in the beginning, we're specifically going to try and sit down with the three admins, Sin, myself, and Shiki, and see if we can't talk to the members and get some ideas on how you guys think that we can improve the server. Specifically, we're kind of looking at the um, anything in the server, but specifically, we're looking to focus on emerging groups and getting that revamped because we had a lot of interest in the beginning and then they kind of fell off. So we're looking at ways to get that to be more engaging for everybody. So if that if you have ideas on that or anything in the server, make sure you guys check that out. 
or if you can't make it, you can always DM me directly and I'll try and uh, bring that up to Sin and Shiki to see what they think of uh, your ideas so that we can hopefully implement them. And uh, also, after watching this live stream, I plan on becoming a major uh, thief in the future because I think a lot of you have a lot of great ideas and I would love to steal them. Specifically, the Notion content uh, curation, I think is amazing. I think it looked amazing. And uh, YouTube emotes is something that I think it sounds like a lot of fun. So I think there's a lot of cool things that I definitely am going to steal from you. Uh, hopefully, I give you credit, but we'll see. That's pretty much it going on in the uh, Japanese server. All right, cool. Thank you so much, Brett. Uh, I don't know if you saw earlier, but I had to give you a shout out for all your work with the QA bot, uh, which really inspired the FAQ page that just came out. So you should definitely look at it when you get a chance. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you for the shout out. Yeah. So thank you, Brett. And uh, lastly, we're going to go to uh, Pandy Jack for the Russian server update. Yeah. So hey, everyone. It's Pandy by Jack. Uh, I just recently was given the uh, moderator role for the Russian Refold server, um, but I've been a part of the community for a long time, um, ever since Refold started. So I think it's one of the best communities for Russian learners out there, um, just because, you know, being the nature of the Russian languages, um, there's usually a lot of, um, you know, toxicity regarding to politics and stuff like that in many of the Russian learning servers. and. Uh, you know, so far we have, I think the community has done a great job of avoiding all of that, you know, staying positive, you know, staying on topic, um, motivating uh, other learners and, you know, just being awesome all around. So I would definitely, you know, like to thank the whole community, whole uh, Rufold, as we call it <laughs> internally, um, for being awesome, you know, and, you know, even personally, um, when I was back, when I was beginning with uh, Russian, you know, it was just MIA. Uh, I was the only Russian learner I knew. And, um, you know, so when Refold started, you know, the Russian server started, it was just a huge help to me, you know, just knowing that there are other people out there, you know, doing the same thing as me, you know, and just being able to talk to them, it was awesome. Um, and so recently we've been doing a lot more. Um, so compared to the other servers, we don't have a lot of events, but recently we've been trying to do um, movie events um, where, you know, a couple of users, you know, just if they want to watch a movie, they'll just hold a poll, you know, a week a week before and, you know, just say like, hey, does anybody want to watch this with me? Um, and it's super casual. So, you know, it's really easy to approach. So even if you, if a member of the community wanted to do something, um, it's just pretty easy. You could contact one of the moderators, or administrators, or just type in the cha event channel that they if, if it's feasible we can do it um and we also had a uh, you know lots of new wins um new progress updates that you know people are just making great progress with the language um there was there's one user who recently went back to russia after a long time you know after they've been refolding for about six or so months and they saw a great boost in their comprehension they were able to talk to people there you know connect on an emotional level you know talk to their family um which was just so motivating to me personally and i'm sure to a lot of the other members too and um you know we've had people connect with friends who speak russian you know who they've never been able to talk to in russian you know so that's just been super super amazing um i congratulate them for that and you know so it's a big win for the server um we also have a lot of cool discussions on the server you know especially in the today i learned channel about words you know native chime in if somebody posts a word you know and if it's a interesting usage or a, you know if it's a word that's kind of even new for natives you know because literary words and stuff like that we have a lot of high level learners who might post that um so we have great discussions on there so you know, even if you just read through that, you know, you might know a lot more about the language. Um, we did a book club for, uh, a, you know, a classic literature book, uh, Dostoevsky, White Knights, uh, a few months ago. And it was amazing, you know, how some people joined, uh, they listened to the audiobook, some people read it. Um, you know, we even had a native uh, Russian speaker listen to it in English, which is their target language. So it was kind of cross uh, 
you know, server across language, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and that's uh, we we have a lot more going on, but that's the main uh, kind of overview of what we've been doing. Um, and I, I'd also like to, you know, just as a just as a member of the community, what I would like to see uh, from the, you know, what we would like to do is. Um, you know, have more events like, you know, maybe interviews with uh, high level learners, um, you know, even with other Russian natives uh, who are learning other languages at high levels. You know, we've had we have learners for uh, Japanese, Korean, English, high level learners at that. So I think there's great potential and, uh, you know, it's, it's a great server. If you're even think, thinking about learning Russian, please join in, you know, say hi. Be really great. We'd be really happy to help out. All right, cool. Thank you for representing the Russian server and talking about what's going on there. Uh, I will give it back to Ben for our next segment. I'm muted, of course. Well, um, thank you all so much for that that awesome little section listening to the, from the different servers. It's super cool. Are there any final thoughts or things you questions you want to ask each other while I still have you here? Uh, no, but I, I did have one other point that I forgot to mention that I just remembered. Um, something that our admin Jimmy started is he started a Chinese in the wild page. So there's a few people that you know if they go to Chinatown and see anything. Chinese written in the real world or some people that are living in you know China and Taiwan they just like take pictures of it and send it to the chat so it's kind of just like an informal thread of uh you know stuff stuff that you can just read and like actually practice reading stuff in the real world and there's also oh. a, a memes channel that has quite a lot of funny stuff posted of uh yeah I've cracked up quite a few times looking at some of them so that's a, a more more casual thing and the, the YouTube remotes I think someone else mentioned there's a few most that we added from like TV, like famous TV shows or, or YouTubers as well. Great. Well, um, thank you all so much then for your, your contribution. That was a super fun segment. Um, but we're going to move on now to the next part of the stream. So I'm going to. Thanks for watching. We host this live stream every month to share what we're working on and take questions from the community. If you want to tune in and participate, then support Refold on Patreon. Visit community.refold.la slash Patreon dash benefits and support today. Oh, and please like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. It really helps the channel.